What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with another dueling book game with myself at 831 rating and my opponent at 794 rating, so a decently high rated game. Uh, I am on Evil Twin and my opponent is on Prank Kids and I do want to say I think this is an amazing game. Uh, they're really, it is really back and forth games and I think it shows a lot of interactions on both sides and that's why I really wanted to showcase this game. Uh, I think a lot of really good stuff happens and I'll sort of commentate over that and if you do enjoy this type of content be sure to leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out and what I do here on the channel uh, and yeah it is greatly appreciated so without further ado let's get into this matchup and pranks versus evil twin I think is a really interesting matchup because inherently they're almost the same deck right like a lot of decks have this strategy like you could say code talker Evil Twin, Marincess to an extent, Salamangrate, Prank Kids. They're all like very one card engine decks that literally just make a small, like not menacing board and then draw hand traps, right? Like this deck does it with Pranks and my deck does it with Kiss a Kill. So the distinction comes in like what the end board is, what the utility options are, and how many flex spots versus engine spots it plays, and how the engine, how strong the engine itself really is, I think. And um, yeah, Evil Twin versus Pranks is an interesting one. I do think especially this format, Pranks has proven itself to be, you know, one of the strongest decks, uh, especially pre-Despia. So Pranks definitely just strong meta contender. So we're going to see how it goes. Starting off with the Rock, Paper, Scissors. I do lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors. Um, it's sort of fine in Twins, again you have so many flex spots that normally it's fine, um, and yeah, we're just gonna take a look at our opening's hands, our opening's hands, our opening hand, uh, one designator, Lilla Treat, Forbidden Droplet, Secret Password, and Lilla, so, starter, pseudo extender here, and extender here, go second card, and extender here, so this is an amazing go first hand, not actually a great go second hand, but we do have the droplet. Our opponent has Mystic Mine, Called by the Grave, Lamb Seas, Place, and Effect Veiler. So I'd say our opponent opened up pretty good here with Called by and a Prank, uh, and a Go second card as well. So our opponent is going to start us off here. Definitely just going to go through the Prank combo. And yeah, the, the one card engine for Prank Kids, of course, essentially ends on Battle Butler, and Evil Twin ends on Trouble Sunny. And but Battle Butler is a little bit of a stronger card than Trouble Sunny, although it requires more pieces to come together to work. Again, like, one twin is Trouble Sunny, but Prank Kids need to go through multiple pieces, like, to get, you know, Bow Wow to add back, Doodle to add back, go through all their Prank Kids. Um, but yeah, you know, this is their one card engine that just tries to draw hand traps with, of course, Pranks. And that's why I'm saying these decks are very similar. A lot of you already know that, so... Roxy's draw, drawing into Dropsies. Our opponent did not open up Brave here, which is going to help us out a little bit. We did have Droplet, so it's not like if they opened Brave, it wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world. But uh, yeah, him not opening Brave would be really bad if I had like an Ash Blossom or a good hand trap to stop him. But he does have the called by, so that works out for him. I'm uh, going to go ahead and activate the Pranks, discard, make a token. Of course, going into Bow Wow. Uh, and then he is going to use the Dropsies effect. I think I forgot to take 500 here, but we're going to correct that right now. Uh, he's going to summon the Fanzies and go ahead and set two, of course, setting Called By and Pandemonium. Uh, and he's going to shuffle back for Pranks at his end phase and draw a card. And he is going to draw Ghost Bell, which is a fantastic draw. Uh, drawing a Hand Trap off Pranks is the ideal because it's just an extra interruption that you just sort of cheat out for free, which is what this deck tries to do with Kiss a Kill. So. Uh, all is fair in love and war, I guess, and we're going to draw for turn, and we're going to draw Ash Blossom. Would have been really nice on our last turn, but, you know, we it's going to end up being, like, either a droplet discard or a discard later, uh, unless we find a way to activate it, you know, this turn. So, we're going to start our turn off. He's going to Bow Wow. I'm going to say that's fine. Uh, there was a reason to sort of droplet that in draw phase, but then he can just pandemonium with those and make Weather Washer, and it's still pretty good. So I'm just going to wait for the Battle Butler and, you know, sort of stop what's going on. Um, it, it sort of depends on the situation, I think, which one you want to do. But in this one, I'm going to negate the Battle Butler. So I'm going to start with Lilla, activate her effect, and our opponent is going to say okay. So it's pretty good on him, you know, not using Valor there because Valor loses to an extender very hard. I feel like a lot of people have a tough time hand trapping twins because sometimes if you hand trap the normal summon, their turn might end. But it's also very easy to punish, you know anyone who hand traps like your initial twin summon because secret password's an extender home's an extender snitch is an extender there's a lot of evil twin extenders of course these naturally are extenders so it's very easy to be punished there so he's not going to veiler there waiting for something you know sort of better to affect veiler 
Uh, he's gonna activate Pandemonium, so fair enough. Uh, yeah, stopping twins right here means you're essentially putting them on Password or Home because these extenders won't be good if there's no board, right? So, Pandemonium here makes sense. He's gonna activate his Pranks, and as Chain Link 4, I'm going to activate Droplet. So, he didn't activate Place there, which, you know, fair enough. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered too much if he did, but just, just to note, he didn't activate the place. I'm going to chain link for Droplet and negate his butler, of course, discarding a monster because we really don't want him chaining. Um, and from here, he's just going to choose to summon with fire and water. Uh, but he did activate all three, so he should have dumped. I don't think he did. Uh, but it definitely says he declared fansies, so... Yeah, our, a little misplay by our opponent. He definitely should have sent there, but we're going to make Centauria. And this is something very good about the twin deck going into the Prank Kid board. Is a very easy way to clear everything. Because a lot of decks have a real problem, even if they out the Battle Butler, making sure they clear everything that is follow-up on the board. Especially through a couple of hand traps, or like an, a called by interrupt. But a, a Zeus deck can clear it very easily. So we're going to go into battle... Swing at the Roxy, he's going to go ahead and overlay the Downard, overlay the Zeus, and we are going to activate, to which our opponent says, you know, call by the Grave. He's going to lose it if he doesn't activate it here, so he's going to go ahead and banish the Lilla Treat, which is, you know, fair enough. Best thing to hit there, for sure. Um, and, you know, Zeus is going to resolve and send everything but himself, to which the Battle Butler is going to activate, and it's going to bring out the uh, Doodle Doo. Fair enough, and we're going to activate Zeus to try to clear that form of follow-up because our Zeus is actually going to be leaving here, so we might as well use it. Our opponent goes ahead and affect Veilers, and that is fine by me because I still have a play here, and I don't want that play to get affect Veilers, so him using it on Zeus there is fine because Lilla is going to pop Doodle Doo anyways if our play goes through. Uh, so I'm like, Veiler is good. I'm going to go ahead and activate the secret password, searching live twin home. Gonna go ahead and live to home, discard the Ash. I was very concerned, of course, about him having an additional hand trap to stop this play. So as much as I want Ash Blossom against, you know, prank kids, especially for things like terraforming to search Mystic Mine, uh, or, you know, he didn't put Meow back, so Ash isn't great there, but in this situation, I felt it was very worth to play around the additional hand trap rather than save the Ash Blossom, right? So that is why we discarded the Ash. I'm gonna go ahead and special summon out a Kiss -a Kill, link off the Zeus and the Kiss -a Kill to make uh, you know, red kiss a kill, link kiss a kill, I should say, I don't know why I'm doing that, I'm going to activate our effect to which he changed the ghost bell, and we do have ghost bell in our deck, so cross out designator, I'm going to go ahead and banish our ghost bell, special back the lilla, and of course go straight into, you know, standard twin line, I'm going to go ahead and bring back the kiss a kill, and since we started with kiss a kill, which was the goal, we're going to get a draw, and it's about how you find your pop, which you know, in this situation, we're just going to make Trouble Sunny and then activate her effect. To special summon both out, activate the Lilla. And Lilla effect, go ahead and pop the Doodle Doo anyway. So the effect Veiler essentially being useless, which I knew it would be, which is why it didn't get designated. Uh, and then we're going to go make another Trouble Sunny and set the Imperm. Imperm was a fantastic draw off Kiss a Kill, which is, you know, essentially the same thing Pranks tries to do, like I have previously mentioned. Uh, go into end phase, we don't get Nibiru, which is very nice. Uh, he's gonna go and he draws fusion destiny, which is an amazing top deck like I was pretty certain if he just had this You know, it's interesting because if he chooses to go for the mystic mind route We're actually sort of in trouble uh, Because what's really annoying about trouble sunny and sort of Yu-Gi-Oh mechanics in general is You know, it says special summon up to one kiss a kill monster and up to one Lilla monster, right? So for like kiss a kill up to one you can choose zero and if you want to go for Lilla You can also choose zero up to one zero counts, right? However, because of, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! game mechanics, you can't choose zero for both of them. Because then you're attempting to activate a f an effect that does nothing, which you're not allowed to do in Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is really strange. Like, I've played other card games, you know, that have up to one, and you can actually choose zero for both effects, and you technically just resolved a card without effect, but it's still, like, activated and was fine. But in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you actually can't do that with Trouble Sunny versus Mystic Mind, which is so unfortunate because by, you know, just card effect text, you should be able to, like, I am summoning up to one kiss -a kill and up to one Lilla, I have just chosen zero for both. It's something I really don't like about some of the game mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh, but yeah. Mystic Mind actually puts us in a bind, is what I'm saying here, but our opponent drawing Fusion Destiny might actually be good for us, because it tempts him to go for that route. Uh, so he's gonna summon Dropsies, which I'm like, okay, his Meow's gone, he didn't put it back. And then he activates Fusion Destiny, I'm like, wow, that's such a crazy rip, that card is so good. Uh, dumping, of course, the bricks to summon out DPE. 
Uh, and he's gonna activate DPE, to which I go ahead and activate Trouble Sunny because I don't want him popping Sunny. And I'm essentially putting on him on, like, pop a twin or pop my back row, right? And I'm fine with either. If he pops a twin, of course, I don't get their effects instantly. Um, I'll have to, like, use the other one's effect to bring back and then use that effect there. Uh, but if he pops the back row, I get both of my effects here, which I think both are sort of fine for me. So I'm saying thinking on pop, I choose to pop the dropsies. So he has to uh, pop the enforcer and my back row he chooses because, you know, I got the pops there. Uh, and so I draw Effect Valor off Kiss Kill, another fantastic draw, uh, pretty lucky draws here on my part, drawing Imperm last turn, Effect Valor this turn, Kiss Kill definitely putting in some work, he's gonna activate his DPE in Grave, and then activate Mystic Mind, so, act, you know, going for DPE and activating it there means that his Mystic Mind isn't gonna be that great because DPE is of course gonna come back, so, I'm like, okay, this is fine because I can always just like make Trouble Sunny and sort of play there. Uh, DPE is gonna come back. He's going to attempt to activate the effect of course in standby phase because he wants to keep me under mystic mind Which is the goal, but we top deck droplet So my draws this game were insane and uh, I feel not bad about it at all because if you're locking your opponent under mystic mind You probably deserve to get luck sacked out of the game. It's just how Yu-Gi-Oh Karma works So we're gonna activate droplet in response to his DPE of course sending our kiss a kill and then uh, negating his destroy Phoenix enforcer we're gonna banish the trouble sunny Sending the kiss, uh, the big kiss of kill in Lilla, uh, and we're definitely gonna send his Mystic Mind because I can't send this and then lock myself under Mystic Mind. I have to do it this way. Uh, and he was a little confused in chat. He was like, I was, you know, targeting Mystic Mind. I was like, send to grave. And he's like, at end phase, and I'm like, Sunny, Sunny effect though. Like, I, I think he just missed what Sunny actually does. But we're gonna go into more twin stuff here. Gonna go ahead and activate Lilla. Summoning Kiss a Kill, Kiss a Kill effect, draw a card, and it is another effect Veiler, so my draws here were just always gonna be good cards, I guess. You know, no engine, just drawing flex spots, so normal summon effect Veiler, go for Nightmare Unicorn, discard effect Veiler to send back the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, and we draw a card because Unicorn is co-linked. Drawing Kiss a Kill, not the best draw, but not the worst thing ever to have more engine. Kiss a Kill effect, bring back the Lilla. Uh, no effect to pop, of course, there's no reason to, and then we're gonna make another Trouble Sunny. And we're going to quickly swing here for 5,500. No reason, in my opinion, to no Tribute Trouble Sunny and Summon 2 because we've actually gone through 3 Sunny. So that's this is the Sunny you don't push forward an extra 2,200. Unless it's game, of course, and then you will. Uh, but yeah, we essentially put our opponent on a draw and Celestial draw. Uh, so we're in a pretty good spot unless he draws something insane. Uh, he's going to special the Griffin Rider so that he can use Celestial. Uh, Celestial effect, go ahead and draw 2. And he is going to draw right and imperm. So those are pretty good draws, honestly. Like imperm, of course, is dead here until the next turn, but it's not terrible. Uh, at resolution, before he activates right, I'm you know I'm gonna activate my frost. He was just going a little fast there. Uh, and frost is going to draw me the third effect veiler. So we were just gonna have veiler here no matter what. Like I drew all three effect veilers in, in pretty decent succession here with 23 cards in deck left. So veiler really wanted to be in my hand. I'm gonna chain to right because. Otherwise, if I let right resolve, Griffin can just negate my Trouble Sunny, which I don't want, so. Trouble Sunny is going to bring out both twins. And I actually do a typo here, which was really unfortunate. Um, he's going to resolve that. And then I say, Lil Chain Link 2, that's supposed to be, you know, Kiss a Kill Chain Link 2. Like, that, that part was supposed to have a K in front of it. Lil Chain Link 2 is bad because that means Griffin can negate it and, you know, I, I get a draw, which is cool. Um, but my opponent, regardless, is going to scoop there because, you know, even if he negates the Lilla, he's left with a token, and that doesn't actually do anything. So, he was going to lose there either way, regardless of me messing up my chain link. So, we're going to go into game two, in which I, of course, expect to go second, and that is the case. Alright, so, looking at the opening hands, I have a starter in Lilla, Monster Reborn, Twin Twister, Sunny Snitch, and Ash Blossom. This hand is kind of insane. We have Starter, Extender, Ash Blossom as a ghost second card. Twin Twister is amazing versus the Prank Kid deck, of course. Uh, and Monster Reborn as a really good extender or a way to steal a DPE, which is one of my favorite things about it. Our opponent opened up Fanzies, Water Enchantress, Judgment, Fanzies, Ash. So his hand is also very good, um, except, you know, he opened two normal summons. And this is one thing I think twins have over any other of the you know sort of one card engine into like hand trap decks and that is that a lot of their starters are extenders like take a deck like prank kids 
their starters are not extenders, right? Like Fanzies is not an extender here. Uh, and their spells are like Place, which is an extender. Pandemonium, yes, it's kind of an extender. And Pranks is kind of an extender. But those cards are played at one because they're like bricks. And, you know, Evil Twin, the extenders are starters and extenders. And I've always found that so broken about the twin deck. And one of the reasons this engine sort of plays through hand traps better than the other one card engine decks, in my opinion. Uh, of course, this deck's board is nothing compared to Prank Kids' end board. And Prank Kids get to play Brave, which is absolutely insane. Twins cannot play Brave. Uh, so, yes, yeah, you're just talking about the engines versus the engines essentially here. And of course, I want to talk about the double fancy specifically. But otherwise, his hand is Prank Kid enchantress judgment ash his, his hands cracked still regardless so going into his turn he's going to go ahead and start off with the enchantress i only opened one hand trap here it's not going to work on a prank kid because he opened enchantress so i'm high rolling the ash hoping he didn't he didn't hard open the right and you know lucky for us he did not uh so he's gonna normal summon prank you know he doesn't have to fear ash anymore gonna go ahead and activate the fanzies gonna go ahead and dump the pandemonium special the roxies so gonna go ahead and link into doodle Doodle effect, chain link one, Roxy's chain link two. Gonna go ahead and banish that fanzies more than likely. Yep, draw into Griffin Rider. So that's an interesting draw, of course, because Enchantress did not resolve. Uh, not the greatest draw for sure there. Gonna go ahead and summon the Lampsies and draw Pranks. Then he's gonna go into Doodle Doo. Actually, the Lampsies burn me for 500. Special summon the Dropsies, which, you know, just more Prank stuff. And then he's gonna go into Verte Anaconda. And in this match, I was sort of thinking that was quite strange. Like, he's essentially saying, I don't want to go Battle Butler here. I want to go DPE. I'm not a Prank Kid player. I'm not quite sure why he goes this route. As a twin player, I feel like, you know, Battle Butler is very good versus me. DPE is, of course, amazing. You know, he can go for a lot of follow-up in that and not fear Zeus in the same way, I guess. Um, but yeah, this was a really interesting play to me because I feel like Battle Butler is definitely the way here. I I'm a little confused on why he went this route, essentially, so that is one thing. I guess, you know, it plays around Twin Twister in a hand where you don't have Solemn Judgment, but he does, so he would protect his Pandemonium either way. Uh, it's really interesting to me. So he's gonna go Verte Anaconda. I guess he really values DPE against Twin, which, fair enough, it's a very good card, and Celestial Engrave is absolutely broken, but I just thought it was a little strange, so make DPE, set Judgment. Uh, activate the pranks go end phase pranks gonna go ahead and shuffle back meow fanzies and lampsies and he's going to draw a terraforming which is another prank kid so he draws follow-up which is very nice but yeah so essentially he's ending uh destroy phoenix enforcer judgment and ash with follow-up and celestial and terraforming it's not bad i just think that you know the regular battle butler's a little better so this might have been a misplay on his part um yeah just an interesting choice i think but, uh, yeah, we're going to draw another Sunny Snitch, which is not going to do anything, but we do need a discard with Twin Twister, so that works. Going to go ahead and standby phase, Twin Twister, pitch the Snitch, and target both his back row. He's going to Solemn Judgment. I know Pranks is a very good card in the Prank Kid deck, and it's one I really want to remove from the field, like, all the time, because the card's crazy. But I'm not so sure it's worth, like, 3,000 life points right here. I, I don't know. I mean, he's losing Judgment anyway, so maybe it's worth, but... You can just add this back so easily as long as you're able to prank combo, right? So, I thought it was an interesting judgment, but it does, you know, keep pranks on field. So, I guess, uh, assuming I don't have, like, that's a really good play if I don't have a strong hand, right? But my hand's pretty strong here. Uh, gonna go ahead and activate Lilla. Surprised he doesn't, you know, Ash Blossom. I feel like that's the best point to Ash if you're high rolling one hand trap. But he does have the Enforcer, so I guess you can play around the summon here and then Ash play around the Extender, which is fair enough. Uh, so he's going to DPE and he's going to pop the Lilla, which is the best one to hit here because of course me having treat is less good than me having frost. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and activate snitch to which he does ash blossom. And we do have the monster reborn, which initially was, you know, sort of the idea to take his destroy Phoenix enforcer. However, because he put himself so low, they're essentially always going to pop their verite here instead of try to dodge things with enforcer, like dodging nightmare unicorn by sending him to grave. Uh, you know, he's so low on life points, he's going to send the Verte, which, again, fair enough, but Monster Reborn here now not having to be used for the DPE can be used on any blue twin in my graveyard, which is going to be the Lilla. I mean, it could have been any monster. It didn't have to be a twin. I could have Monster Reborn Dasher, and I still could make Kiss a Kill and go through the same play, uh, but essentially it didn't matter what I Monster Reborn as long as he didn't have Bell or Crow, which... 
Thinking about it, I guess Monster Reborning a monster in his graveyard is better because it plays around Crow, so I guess that's a mistake on my part. Um, thinking about it now, that plays around Crow a lot better, so yeah, that's something I'll definitely do in the future, thinking about it. I mean, Crow is still going to get us anyways because we only had one Lilla, so if they just Crow that, we're sort of in a bind either way, but for future reference, that will come up, so yeah, might have to do that. Lilla effect, bring back the kiss a kill. going to go ahead and get a draw here. Uh, draw into Nibiru, that is a very good draw against Prank Kids, of course, if he drew the follow-up. Going to go ahead and find Sunny, activate Sunny's effect. Going to go ahead and bring out the Lilla and the Kizakill. Lilla effect, going to go ahead and pop that Pranks anyways. And then I did that in main phase, of course, not going to battle phase, so I could send the DPE with the Trouble Sunny. Trouble Sunny, of course, being one of the craziest cards that I think they've given one of the archetypes I play in a long time. It, it, it's one card to make essentially a pop and a draw plus a non-target send. And, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. I, I love Trouble Sunny. We're going to go ahead and make the second Sunny here. Uh, go end phase. Go end phase. Go end phase. Go end phase. We don't get Nibiru, which is great. And our opponent is going to draw Water Enchantress, which is an amazing draw. Uh, of course, he already has the Griffin, which means, like, a Ogre on uh, Fateful Adventure wouldn't even be that great. We did not get Frost Engrave, so all we have is an a pop and a draw and an Nibiru, which is, you know, still fine. Uh, our opponent is going to go ahead and activate the Water Enchantress. And he is going to add the right. Right effect, going to go ahead and activate and place the Fateful Adventure. I'm chaining Trouble Sunny here because I think I wanted to pop the Fateful in this situation. He's going to chain the Griffin Rider, which es essentially puts us in the same situ situation we were at in the other game, except this time I'm not going to typo. He's going to summon the token, place the Fateful. I'm going to chain link to Kiss a Kill this time. Uh, he's going to Griffin Rider negate the draw, fair enough, but I'm going to pop the token at this point. I'm going to go ahead and activate Terraforming. At this, I I'm super scared of Mystic Mine, honestly. Like, I was wondering what he was going to go for here, but he does go for the place, which is fair. He wants to find Engine. He probably knows since he saw Twin Twister that I sided back row hate against the Prank deck. Um, and of course, because they run Mystic Mine, so going for Prank to get the Engine rolling, I think, is more than fair. Of course, he does have to worry about Sunny Snitch at this point being so low on life points, but Pranks gain a thousand in their combo, so he'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and summon the Lampsies, Link into Meow. Uh, Lampsies effect burned me for 500. We're just going over the Sunny Snitch life point thing. He, he wasn't keeping up with it, fair enough. Uh, so I was just reminding him in chat. I'm gonna go ahead and activate Chain Link, slower my Kiss Kills attack, add Draco back, summon the other twin, and because he has summoned Griffin Rider, Token, Lamp, Meow, and Roxy's on that summon, I'm going to go ahead and use the effect of Lilla. He has no response, obviously, and I'm going to chain Nibiru to Lilla, which is going to clear the board, and then Lilla will resolve, summoning the kiss -a kill Which is one thing, I like how when you're already established, the twin deck plays with Nibiru very well, because you essentially don't lose anything. Like, especially when you have Trouble Sunny, you can, like, Trouble Sunny chain link 1, Nibiru chain link 2, go ahead and summon Nibiru, and then Trouble Sunny brings out both twins. It's so good. Like, once you're established, Nibiru's great in this deck, but it is, like, very terrible when you're not established. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and Celestial Draw, which is, you know, fair enough, and he is going to draw Ash and a Dropsies. He's gonna attempt to pass. I'm gonna Kiss a Kill Effect to summon Lilla, and at this point, the writing's on the wall. Ash isn't going to be a great go second card. Draco back does nothing. He's at 2200. He is more than going to lose the game here, so just looking at my next draws, I say GG. Um, a draw tactics and crow those were some pretty good draws uh, in general but yeah that is going to do it for this game sort of a long recording I guess I did more explain than I normally do but again if you did enjoy that leave a like subscribe uh, comment down below what you think of you know the match or the decks or you know if you're an aspiring twin player we do go up to 845 rating I'm noticing here which is okay I don't play that much so my ratings never that high but that's decently mid high ladder so not terrible uh, but yeah, again, hope you guys did enjoy. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.